Hey everyone, in this video we're going to read another short Latin story. So this one's called the story of Polycrates, and I'm breaking it into a couple different pieces. This first part is called His Riches, and it comes from George L. Bennett's Easy Latin Stories for Beginners. You've heard me um, make a lot of these videos before. If you want to use Bennett's book, you can find it on my website. Just go to Nova Latin, you'll see all his um, stories laid out for you to read. But I like Bennett because, um, like I always tell you, it just gives you a chance as a Latin student to read something different. As a teacher, I like to use this just to break up kind of the monotony of going through a Latin textbook. The one caveat is what Bennett is calling easy um, and stories for beginners are not necessarily easy and they're also not necessarily for beginners. All right. So I think what he was calling <clears throat> um, easy in the late 1800s doesn't quite match up with what I would say um, is easy. So I always try to use these um, more in like my Latin two range, two or three, depending on kind of what story it is. There's some more complex grammar in it. Um, I would definitely say that if you are starting out in Latin and Latin one, you probably won't be able to read a ton of these. Um, you can try them, of course, but if you run into something you don't understand, just kind of move on um, and wait until you've, you've done a little bit more grammar because he does bring things like the subjunctive um, and something that comes up pretty quickly and that mood is just not really taught in Latin one. <clears throat> so that's kind of where I would peg it. If you're a Latin learner, somewhere in that Latin two range, maybe you've already done middle school Latin and you're starting high school Latin, something like that. But whenever you feel ready to read these and you understand them a little bit, they are a great way to bring in, um, like I said, just a change of pace from a traditional Latin textbook. Bennett likes to use different stories from history or, or maybe stories that have a moral value to them. Um, and it really does break up what you normally see in a traditional textbook. And like I said, if you want to read more about Bennett or more of his stories, take a look at my website. You can find it all there. Okay. So this story is coming from Herodotus, <clears throat> right? The famous Greek historian. And it's about a tyrant from the Greek island of, of Samos, right? Whose name is Polycrates. You can see Samos is right here. This is the modern day one, but it gives you an idea of what it looked like. And according to the legends, right? Polycrates was incredibly wealthy and he uses his power um, to create what we call a thalassocracy, which is a seaborne empire, right? So his empire, uh, empire rather is built on the sea and having a strong navy. Um, that's something you see a lot in ancient Greek history, just because there are so many islands and you've got the Mediterranean Sea there, the Aegean, um, they tend to be more naval. And he does this during the 6th century BC. So kind of a really important time for, for Greek history. He rises on Samos. So in ancient times, um, Samos was known for its wine, its pottery, <clears throat> and also its impressive buildings. So you can see there's a lot of really cool um, stuff that was on the island. It was also the birthplace of the famous Pythagoras, right? You might have known him from the, the Pythagorean theorem fame. Um, he's from the island. And there's a bunch of other philosophers and mathematicians. So Samos is a really important island. And at this point, it's taken over by a tyrant. Now, I will put another caveat. A tyrant doesn't mean like a bad person, right? It's a specific term we use when you're learning Greek history um, for someone who kind of takes over uh, rule, right? And rules by themselves. It's sort of like a king, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person. You can be a good tyrant. Um, and it's something that's that's worth looking into right if you're a little interested in that term uh feel free to look it up on your own okay but in this story we're going to get a a short glimpse at his rise he has a, an interesting friendship with an egyptian pharaoh that we'll read about um and his downfall right and that's what that's what makes it kind of an interesting story but if you are interested in learning more about this and you should be right you can feel free to do some research on your own learn about polycrates learn about um the island of samos um, you know, even the Egyptian pharaoh you're going you're gonna to learn about. You can do some research on your own, get out there, um, try to d dive into it, or read some Herodotus, right? You can find them. It's always a good bet, okay? But before we dive too far into it, with these videos, what I like to do, um, the first thing I'll do is I'll read you the story, start to finish in Latin, um, just so you get a chance to hear it. Not that my pronunciation is anything fantastic, I tell you in all these videos, but sometimes when you're learning on your own, um, the temptation is just to read and kind of translate in your head. And you don't want to do that. You want to bring it to life. So if you are in class and you have a, a partner, um, a classmate, read it to them, have them read it back to you. That way you can work on your speaking and your, your, your pronunciation as well as your listening skills. I'll read it to you in case you don't have that. So at the very least, you can hear it. Um, but you always want to try to bring the language to life. The other thing that I'd recommend um, is you might want to do a pre-read on some vocabulary. So just look through the story. And if you see any vocab words you're not sure of, maybe make a list, um, put the definition and just practice them. That way you can actually understand what's going on. You don't want to um, try to read through this and have to constantly be, look, constantly, um, be looking in the dictionary. So it's always a good bet. 
learn some of the vocab that way you can kind of dive into it. And the last thing I'd say is once it comes time to actually translate it, if you want to really dive into it and, and learn it really well, I'd always recommend the read and reread method. You always hear me say this, but if you read through the story once, write down problem areas and then try to fix them and repeat that process of reading it over and over again, you should see that after a few tries, you can read it really well. You understand it really well. Um, that's how you can really dive in and make sure you understand the Latin. Um, and if you can do that and you don't have any problem, you know you're ready to move on. Okay. So if you haven't done any of that, <clears throat> pause the video, go back, do some work on your own. But what we're going to do now is read through it, and then I'll unpack this, this first part of the story um, and translate it with you so you can understand what's going on, okay? So the story goes like this. You have Polycrates, qui seditione facta samum acupavit, primum trifarium, distributam civitatem una cum fratribus administravit. Dein altero occiso et natu minore ex insula eiecto universam samum imperio teneba. Quo in imperio cum amasi aegupti reg, uh, rege hospitium contraxit, donis eimisis et wicisum ab illo acceptis. Brevi tempore magno per auctae res sunt polycratis, et per universam ioniam rele, uh, reliquamque graeciam celebratae sunt. Now we get the, the last part of the story. Etinim, cocumque cum exercitu proficiscebator omnia e feliciter cedebant. Habebat autem centum actu, actuarias naves quinquaginta remorum et mille sagitarios, cunctosque homines nullo discrimine facto invades, agebat ferebatque omnia. Aebat enem, magis amico gratifica, uh, gratificabor, ea, que, uh, ea quae eripue restituens, quam ab initio nihil eripiens. Multas egitur insulas cepera, multa item continentis opida. In his lesbios nawali pugna superatus cepi, qui dende fossam murum sami ambientem, vincti foderunt. Okay, so let's pause the video there. Again, just hearing it, you'll, you'll hear me stumble as part of the fun, right? But at least you had a chance to hear the story. It's a longer one, right? Which is why we're breaking into pieces. But that way you get to hear it. Um, and now we'll dive in and hopefully understand it as we go, right? We'll unpack it. So the story starts again like this. You have Polycrates, right? So it's talking about Polycrates, right? That king. And you have qui seditione facta samum occupale. So you have Polycrates who, having made a conspiracy, right? A seditione. He's, he's got this kind of plot. He, he took control over, seized, occupied, you might say, Samos, right? Samum occupavit. So he took control. Then you have primum uh, trifarium distributam, civitatem una cum fratribus administravit, right? So it says at first he managed the, the state, right? Um, so he administravit, he kind of administered or managed the state, and he divided it. It's the state kind of having been divided into three parts, right, trifarium. So he, he breaks it up into three parts, and he does this together with his brothers, una cum fratribus, right? So in the beginning, he kind of breaks it into pieces, and he has his brothers, but he's taking control of the island of Samos, Okay. Then you have Dain, altero occiso et natu minore ex insula eiecto, universam samum imperio teneba. So then, right, having slain one, right, so he offs one of his brothers, so altero occiso. So having slain one and having expelled, right, eiecto, literally ejected or kicked out the younger from the island, right, the natu minore. <clears throat> so he kicks out his younger brother. And he straight up murders the, the, the second one, right? I don't, I'm assuming they were both younger brothers, but I actually don't know. So one brother dies, the other one get, uh, gets kicked off the island. So at this point, he held um, the whole of Samos, Universum Samum, right? The entire island under his rule, Imperio, right? In his command. So he starts off by having his brothers, and then, of course, he kills them um, or kills one and kicks out the other. Now he has control of the island. Then you have, quote, in imper, uh, imperio cum amasi agupti rege. So, and he has um, this friendship you're going to see with amasis. That's who we're talking about here. So you have <clears throat> agupti rege, hospitium contraxit, donis eimisis, et wicisim um, ab illo acceptis. So, and in his rule, right, in imperio, 
uh, he formed a, a friendship, right? He, he, he kind of made a hospitium, yeah, a friendship, you could say, with Amasis, the king of Egypt, right? The pharaoh of Egypt. Um, by and and with uh, sending gifts to him, right? Donis a Mises, right? Um, and he he does this. So in other words, he he forms the friendship um, by sending gifts to him and receiving, right? Akeptis, meaning other gifts from him in return, right? Wikisim Abilo. So it's saying they form a friendship because he starts sending him gifts. Amasis starts um, sending gifts back, and now he has this alliance, kind of this friendship with the pharaoh of Egypt. When you brevi tempore magno per auctai res sunt polycrates et per universum ioniam reliquamque graeciam celebratae sunt. So in a short time, right, soon, um, the, the fortunes, right, of, of Polycrates, you could say, the, the race uh, Polycrates, right? So his, his fortunes, is probably a good way to do it, um, they were greatly increased, magno per auctai sunt, right? So the, the, the great stuff he has, right, all his wealth is increased because he has this great, um, uh, his great friendship, right, Alcatai Sunt. They were augmented or increased. And they were, um, uh, Celebratai Sunt, they were greatly celebrated through the whole, the entirety, the, the Universum, Ionium, the whole of Ionia, right, um, and the rest of Greece. So Ionia, Greece, so Turkey, Greece, it's all, you know, uh, admiring how much wealth he has, right? And you can see here some of the coins that come from Samos around that time. So his wealth becomes kind of legendary, right? Which we mentioned before. Then you have etinim quocumque cum exercitu proficis cebator omnia e feliciter cadeva. So um, indeed, wherever he, um, uh, you know, quocumque, wherever he set out, proficis cebator, he was setting out with his army, um, everything turned out kind of successfully for him. So omnia kedebant feliciter, happily, successfully, I guess you could do, a for him. So everything works out. Wherever he goes with the army, it's going good. He's conquering. He's, uh, you know, he's increasing his wealth and, and doing well. Then you have habebat autem, kentum acturias uh, naves quinquaginta remorum et mille sagittarios. So um, he had kind of moreover autem, right? He had a hundred... Um, uh, warships, right? <clears throat> so these Acturias Naves, these naval warships, um, he has a hundred of them. And they're, they're warships of 50 oars, so quinquaginta remorum, right? So these 50 oared, I guess you could say, uh, warships, um, sometimes like a quinquireme they're, they're, they're called, but he's got, you can see down in the picture here, a trireme, um, but it's, it's these big warships is basically the idea that he has, right? So he has a hundred warships and not only that, but he also has mille sagittarios. He has, um, a thousand archers, right? So he has a nice little navy going on that he could use. Then you have cuntosque homines nullo discrimine facto invadens agebat ferebaque omnia. So he had all this stuff, the army, and invading um, all peoples. So he's the one in Wadens, right? Invading all peoples without making like a, any distinction, right? So nulo discrimine facto. So without regard to who you are, he's invading a bunch of people, right? And lands. And he took and carried off. So ferabaque agebat. He took and he carried off everything. So this is how he's increasing his wealth. He's going around with his giant navy, right? A hundred ships, a thousand archers, um, he, he's going off, he's attacking everyone, um, he invades, and he just carries off all your stuff. This is how he's building up that, that famous wealth he has, making Samos a power. Then you have Aeba Enen, Magis Amico Gratificabor, Ea Quae Eripui Restituens Quam Ab Initio Nihil Eripiens. So he used to say, is kind of one way to do it, the imperfect there, Aeba, <clears throat> but you can say for he was saying, or he used to say, um, I will... <clears throat> excuse me, I will please a friend more. So magis amico gratificabor. So I will be more pleasing to a friend um, by restoring what I have taken away than by taking nothing from him in the first place is really what this is. So he says, I'll be more pleasing by giving back restituents, right? The things which I took away than by taking nothing in the first place, ab initio, in the beginning. So it's this odd little saying he has of like, you know, I'll be, you know, I'm going to give back what I've took than to not take it all. It almost kind of reminds me of, of people who say like, I'll, I'll, do something and ask for forgiveness first and asking for permission, that's kind of his deal, right? It's, it's sort of invade first and ask questions later, okay? 
Then you have multas egetor insulas kepera, multa item continentis opida. So therefore, right, he had taken... Um, uh, he had taken many islands, right? Multas, insulas. He had taken many islands and also many towns, Opida, many towns on the, the continent, on the mainland, right? The the, the, the main, uh, I guess we'd be talking about probably um, Ionia, I would guess, right? The, the Greeks in modern day Turkey. That would be my guess where he's going just based on where Samos is. But he takes a bunch of islands. He's taking towns in the mainland. He's increasing kind of his wealth and everything, okay? Then you have the last line. You have in his lesbia, uh, lesbios, nawali pugna superatos capit quidende fossam murum sami am, uh, ambientem wincti foderat. So among these, right, the people that he conquered, um, he took the, the, the lesbians, right? And this is people from the island of Lesbos, right? So he takes them having been um, defeated, right, in a in a naval battle, Nawali Pugna, right? So those superatos having been conquered um, in a naval battle. So I, I guess he, he sailed up, he conquered um, the, the lesbians in a, in a uh, naval battle, and now he took them, right, Cape, and he took them as prisoners, okay? And who um, then in chains, right, um, he, he um, uh, so in chains, they dug a moat, right? So having been kind of conquered, they, they dug a moat surrounding the walls of Samos, right? Ambiente murum sami. So he takes these people, um, he throws them in chains, and he says, hey, you know, you've been conquered, go go build a moat, um, you know, dig, dig a trench around the island, uh, or sorry, around the walls of Samos. So he's using the people he conquered to kind of improve his own defensive uh, defenses, rather, and build up his island. Okay, so that's part one of the story of Polycrates, right? This one, again, is called His Riches because it's really explaining where he got all his money from and what he did with it. There's a couple more parts to the story that we'll break into uh, future videos. But again, this is a great way to kind of dive into a little bit of Greek history, read something completely different that you, you wouldn't find uh, in a normal sort of uh, Latin textbook, and hopefully have some fun with it, right? Um, test yourself. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below if I uh, stumble or misspoke or whatever it might be, put them there. I'm happy to help you. But otherwise, like I just said, test yourself, use it as a chance to do something new. And hopefully it makes some sense to you, right? The more you practice um, reading Latin by just reading a variety of stuff, the better you're going to be. So take this as an opportunity to just read something different. Again, let me know if you need anything, but otherwise keep at it and good luck.